Well, what we discover out in nature is that these volatile substances do not separate themselves. They come in solutions. They are mixed together. And one of the most common one is actually crude oil. This is a fractionating tower, and this is how they separate the crude oil into its various components, which are then used for different things. A fractionating tower has a lot of heat down here, makes things into vapors that were originally liquids. So if they're vapors, they can rise. And then we have this inset to show you what is going on as it rises through the tower. There are trays in here and they have little baffles in them so that the vapor can get into the baffle and then it will cool down and will form a liquid. And then it will boil again and rise again. But the crude oil being a solution is put in here and it's not heated to an infinite temperature though. There are some things that still do not vaporize and just collect as liquids. They end up pouring out the bottom. And these are the asphalts and tars that are so heavy. They, they're, the number of carbons in their chain is very, very high. It's greater than a chain length of 50. And so they're very thick and they do not have much volatility. They stay as a liquid and they're pulled off the bottom of the fractionating tower. So why is it a fractionating tower? Because they're getting different fractions, different portions of it. This is just the very heaviest stuff. And we start going up to the top of the fractionating tower. Around the, this area is 400 degrees Celsius. And what we'll collect as a liquid at 400 degrees Celsius will be used for lubricating oil. And it has chain lengths that are, has 20 carbons to 50 carbons in a chain. As you go up this, you're getting further away from the source of heat. The temperature goes down at about 300 Celsius. You'll collect things that have chain lengths of 16 carbons to say 22 carbons. And these are things that are used as heating oil. Go up a little further, it's getting cooler. The chain lengths get shorter, 14 to 20 here is diesel oil. Go up a little further, but I'll get C8. Oh, you might recognize C8. That's octane, up to 16. And these are used for kerosene to jet fuel. And then you get up here to the highest part and you'll end up with one other little box that they're using at a temperature that's lower than 100 degrees Celsius so that they can uh, separate what they're going to use as gasoline from the things that are just straight up gases. So gasoline actually ends up being a combination and it goes from pentane to decane but octane is the one that they always talk about at the gasoline pumps because that's the temperature that is burning the most efficiently within an internal combustion engine. So this is why they keep telling you what the octane rating is, but it actually is a mixture. And from C5 to C10, the chain length is 5 to 10 carbons. And the ones that are always still a gas, well, methane is C1. It's got CH4. So the chain is literally one long. And then you would have ethane, propane, and butane. Those are the gases that would persist as gases after going through this whole process of now they're down to room temperature and they would still be a gas under normal circumstances. And Nowadays, one of the things they can do with them is they can put extra pressure on them and liquefy them, and then it's very efficient to ship them. So anyway, the fat fractional distillation system is a way of separating these components based on differences in their boiling point is what is going to make the difference in how you can change using the volatility. They're all volatile, but they are volatile at different rates based on the temperature. We saw that in a previous picture, how the different arcs were like this. And so at a particular temperature, one would not do much, but another one would have a, a fair amount of vapor pressure. So the ones that have the most vapor pressure are the lightest ones. They rise the highest and they're taken off at the lowest temperature. And so this is what happens to a barrel of crude oil. It makes massive numbers of things. 
you should make sure you check the animations of this because your textbook has very nice animations. And if you watch this process in an animation, it'll make a lot more sense than just these arrows do because you'll get to see a little bubble of it do what it's going to do. Follow along, see where it ends up.